Hey guys, and welcome to uh, another episode of Down to Business. Um, quite exciting today with, uh, uh, this man needs no introduction in Paul the Chief Harrigan. Um, you know, Hi guys. I've <laughs> got to know Paul quite quite a bit since, uh, actually since getting involved with the Mark Hughes Foundation last year and when we did uh, Mount Kilimanjaro, but um, I get the pleasure, you know, quite often to sit and have a coffee and just be mesmerised by, by Paul's stories and had him in our business and that sort of stuff. So I thought, who better to come along and talk a bit about some of his experience, um, some of it might catch you by surprise in, in regards to where he's come from and what he's been through, etc. to get to where he is and, you know, very successful dealing with corporates and, and, and partnerships and, and now, you know, um, consulting and that to a lot of business. So, um, yes, another sports person, but very much some of the messages that we want to apply within good, successful, you know, small and medium-sized enterprises. So, welcome, Paul. Great to be here. Good to see you, mate. <laughs> Long time no see, not really. Yeah. But um, mate, not that you need an introduction or, or any background. I mean, you're one of Newcastle's favourites, obviously, and, and, a, and a, a big personality, um, not just back in the day, but still. But you know, I, I think it'd be good. A lot of people don't probably understand where you came from pre nights or, or rugby league and that sort of stuff. So, um, mate, I might leave you to tell people a bit about. Well, at the start, yeah. Well, I was born in um, in Curry Curry, great place, Curry Curry. They named it twice. It was so good. Um, moved from there to uh, Lake Macquarie at Belmont and, and had a beautiful, had a great upbringing. Um, I, in the 70s growing up, really idyllic time there, living between the lake and the ocean, I loved it. Uh, I surfed, I played rugby league. Um, I'd always uh, had, had success in, in, in rugby league as a junior and I was about 17 years of age uh, when I left school. I kind of made me mind up that uh, I, I had an apprenticeship at the BHP as a fitter and turner. Um, and that took me a while because I left school uh, at year 10, couldn't get a job, so I went to build my tech, did a pre-apprenticeship in fitter and turning, got a start at the at the BHP, and then that turned into a start at the coal loader, which was a wonderful gig for fitter and turners as an apprentice. Um, but uh, yeah, I come out of my time and they said, uh, listen, uh, Chief, you're, uh, you're a good bloke in that, but when it comes to heavy industry, you're not cut out, <laughs> I'll smell you later. So I got, um, they said, but we'll get your job back at the BHP. And, um, and that, I think I lasted about a month or two, because uh, that was like a huge, big city there. And by that time, my mind was well and truly turned towards rugby league. So I, um, I yeah, I think it was, a, it was about seven and I had a really watershed moment where I was kind of driving around in my car on a Saturday night and I was thinking, I've got too much going for me, really, uh, except for rugby league and I, I remember that particular afternoon stroke night where I, I kind of scoped out of my mind um, what I wanted to do and and I had no right to be thinking the things that I did but it just all sort of panned out I was visualizing it all or I ended up making even a little affirmation that I used all the way through and and, and of course you know the goal was I wanted to, I wanted to play for Australia and the affirmation that I kind of made I used all the way from that point until I got there and however hard I thought that was going to be, it was three times more. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and, and I kind of really believe now that when you, when you decide to do something pretty significant, you at least want to give up, you know, at least twice. Mm -hmm. I mean, a flat coal, this is, this is going nowhere. Because, you know, the, the skinny uh, sort of um, immature kid that I was then, um, you know, there's no way I, I could do that goal. But for the process of, changing myself and, and all the tough times, it, it purged everything that was wrong in me and in my, in my sort of traits and my personality, it squeezed them all out. And um, it took, I, I should have got there at the age of 21, so it should have, should have took me about um, uh, yeah, four years or whatever, but uh, through injuries and circumstances, it got extended till I was 23 and I finally did it and it was so hard. But I, that's where it really forged um, a lot of things in me and and it was looking back it was it had to happen you mm. know i had to happen so yeah basically uh from that point onwards and mind you i was still working you, most guys still worked in those days uh a career and the night so even when i was still at the coal loader i'd get up i lived at belmont i'd get up really early uh get to work by about 6 30 and then I'd work all day and then I'd go to training at night, I'd wait at you know, IC back in those days, Marathon Stadium or you know, McDonald Jones as it is now. 
and I'd wait from 3.30 till about 5 till we started training and um, I'd, I'd do some weights. But basically I'd train, um, get home about 7.30, eat dinner, go to bed, fall asleep and, and, and go back to work. On the weekends I'm playing first grade, you know, it was, it was a really heavy workload. But again, all that stuff, you know, forge good habits. And uh, I remember my old man, uh, he wouldn't let me have a day off. Mm. I mean, ever, ever. I remember one time I was going, Dad, I'm no, I'm no good. And I'm, I'm physically sick. He go, mate, you'll be right. He said, just get there. And then once you get there, if you cook, then ring. And of course, once you're there, it's too far to get back. So all that stuff was good, good grounding. So I think uh, the, kind of the key things I take out of, not just now, but some of our prior conversations and, and how, uh, you know, it can help a business owner. You're big on goal setting, you know, I know that. And, and, and as you said, the affirmations. And, and, and I think um, one of the comments you made me previously was, you know, once you have something, you've got to work your ass up. I think some people just think it comes to you, but, but you've just talked about some of the hard work. But I know. Oh, look, you, you look, if you're a business owner, um, you know, it's so competitive. You think, how many other guys are in my field and what are they doing now? Are they working harder than me? Are they eating, sleeping the goal? You know, you, you're basically pitching yourself against someone who's doing the same thing. Who's the best in the game? What are they doing? And that's what I had to do is that I had to go, okay, who's the best when I became a front row? Because I started winging, winging a center and worked up. But when I end up getting through to the, to the front row, I started going, now, who, who's the best? What are they doing? Well, I'll tell you what, um, I'm eating and sleeping my goal. I'm churning it over in my head all the time until the point where it's driving me crazy. I can't stop until I get my goal. Um, I'm training at night time. Now I'm walking in the rain thinking about my goal. You know, who's the best at the moment? Are they doing, well, right now, I'm hungrier than them, so I'm better than them. So you've got to live in that world if you want to compete and be be the best And um, because it's competitive. Yeah, yeah. And I think I think that's, that's, that's the key thing. It is... You know, um, shit happens basically, and, 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 and no one has a great day every day. And I think, you know, having someone to hold you accountable, but more so um, actually making time in your day, in your week, whatever it may be, to dedicate yourself to what you're trying to achieve yeah. is pretty important. And it can't be dry. You know, it, it can't be dried numbers. You know, here's, here's a goal we want to we achieve this budget. You know, we want to. The, the numbers and the stats after a while, uh, or living by. Uh, oh wow, we made it this month, oh, that's great, and all we did in that month, so I'm really down. That doesn't work for me in the long jeopardy. It's got to be more um, emotional based and the reason why I'm doing the things that I do 101 is it, what's my reason? And when things do go tough, well, I, I go to the reason and when things go really good, well, I don't get too carried away. I just go, this is why I'm doing it and I love it. And it gets me through. It mm. gets me through to the next stage. Yeah, great, great. So I, I guess, um, you know, an extension of that is you obviously led a great team to, you know, a premiership and then you played in other teams at other levels, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I guess then taking a, a total different view, you've been involved in, in, in corporate world in teams and that sort of stuff too. From uh, Talk to me about what teamwork means to you and, and what some people can learn about teamwork that's often misunderstood. Well, I mean, if I try to think between you know, different teams that I've been involved with and the ones that had success and maybe the ones that, that didn't. Um, you know, I, I, I am intrigued by, you know, you look at the NASA guys um, and, and the level of detail and accountability and all those things they have. Uh, elite medical people where obviously lives are, are at stake. So when, when they're doing through their operation stuff, the procedures that they go through are uh, incredible. Army is probably the one that, that that really intrigues me the most, that where every action that I do, you know, you normally think my action cause and effect, you know, affects me. But in their mentality, everything I do, how does it affect the team? How does it affect the, the, the crew? Because my actions, you know, their lives are gone, you know. Or, or, you know what I mean? It just affects them so much. So good teams uh, are, are, are really tight. Um, Good teams have that mentality. And I, 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 I always go back to the start of the nights where we, we, we worked it out, but we just want to be the player that everyone else wants to play with. And we worked out what those traits are. And, and basically, 
that that works because our, our coaches uh, and everyone involved got in on it and drove it. And we were praising the people that did the things that I always wanted to do, the most humble, the one that you just wanted to be around. When things go wrong, uh, they lift. And we learned a lot about leadership during that um, scenario. But I, I like that. So when teams are working for each other, you end up reaching new goals. Um, you're overwhelmed by someone else who's got your back and you become really tight. So again, all the elite guys that are in aerodynamics, uh, you know, with, with um, even in nautical stuff, all that precision stuff um, comes back to understanding that I am the team and the team is me. There is no difference between me and the team because everything I do has a cause and effect on the team. I understand it and, and I will not get to let that team down. And mm. that's that code. So there's a lot about values too that you create there with, with that concept. But I mean, that, that and you've got that every day. How does someone keep, in your opinion, um, that team motivated and engaged every day to live that? And then, you know, like one thing, yes, We've got a relationship, we want to do it for each other. Mm. But there are days where that makes it harder. Yeah, well again, I still I still reckon that, you know, you, you do things for others that you wouldn't do for yourself, or you'll go and do something that, oh, I can't be, if it's just me, I'm not, I wouldn't be bothered, you know? Mm. So I still reckon um, having that accountability or, or doing it, you know, I'm, I'm doing it for you as a, as a, as a favour is a good driver. But you know, you, you look at, at a company and you go, well, you know, what are we doing? And obviously some some companies are lucky enough where they really have a tangible effect on people's lives or lifting people up and it's great. But in a lot of businesses, it's it's not. It's 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 a lot drier or it's you gotta find a way where you are creating greater good or a mm. service to someone beyond um, data and numbers and dollars and cents because you don't lay your life down for a dollar, you don't you don't go to the end of the world. Uh, but you will to help someone. You will to to, to make the place a bit better. And What's I think, it around, around purpose? Yeah, it's got. I mean, at the end of the day, as I said, I, I I'm not going to get out of bed or, or do push myself to, to to new limits or do whatever it's got to do. You know, just for it's got to involve someone else. And I think all good goals and. Um, you know, to get out of your own way because we are really hardwired in our, how we view the world. So if you want to change yourself or help someone else, you, it's got the purpose has got to be nearly more than yourself. You know, it's got to involve others, and it's got to you know, it's got to involve the improvement of others. So I, I I draw on that stuff. So every day, normal business, you rock in. I got issues at home. There's things not going great. I'm not feeling good, or I'm out of balance. Um, you know, what, what keeps me going at work? Well, there's a responsibility personally to make sure that you, you got yourself set up. So if you're out of whack, you're out of balance, it does make it hard to get motivated at work. Mm. So take care of that one. But the environment that you create in work, if you want to live in a, in a work environment where it's really competitive and you've got guys flashing what they're doing in front of you um, and thinking that's going to motivate you, you won't, it won't work. You know, it's more the other way of being that person everyone else wants to work with where, you know, you're coming up going, mate, I, I see him go so well last week on your budgets. Um, look, I done great, this is what I did and I can help you. That stuff keeps you going. Mm. So I, I, it really, you know, all those standard values or, or uh, traits that we have or emotions, there's not too much more than that. It's just finding the right ones mm. and, and, and what drives you. And, and hanging in there. And actually, I think the, the, one of the things that you, I guess we've learned from you in some of our recent um, uh, sessions, I guess, is you know making sure that's brought to the forefront and speaking about it. You know, um, and, and I, I mean not just men, women as well. But I mm. think that's uh, especially in a work environment. That's probably a touch, too touchy feely, if you like. But it's but it's a key thing. I think um, you know teamwork. As much as they get associated a lot more with sporting teams, I guess mm. it's it's you know in a work environment. Most people spend that much time there. We need to be speaking about this stuff and, and galvanising that thing. You do, yeah. And understanding each other is a big one. Um, that, that I'll say with all they get in, get understanding. Is that when you when you're working beside someone and you're just not quite understanding where they're coming from, or they might be a bit abrasive, or they're just mate, they're, they're a bit. I don't quite get it. I'm, I'm telling you, you dig a little deeper, uh, you'll unearth why. You know, and you, we always sort of use that example where um, a typical uh, 
scenario of understanding someone was where, you know, the guy's on a train, uh, there's, there's a dad with three kids and um, everyone else has just finished work. These kids are running them up and down the train, they're going bananas. And this bloke's had a big day at work and he says to the, to the, to the dad across the carriage, mate, what are you doing? Pull your kids in like this is ridiculous. And uh, the dad goes, oh man, I'm, I'm so sorry. Sorry, mate, he's just staring into space. And then he goes, oh mate, we've been to the hospital all day. I'm sorry, you know, my wife just passed away. I was, and then obviously the guy said it, oh, I understand, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry, mate. I'm sorry, can I help out? And that scenario happens at work every day where someone's coming in and they're a bit fiery or they're just vague and you go, what's their problem? But I, I swear to you, if you dig a little deeper, you, you, you know, there'll be something behind it or something in their upbringing or why they do the things that they do. And once you understand it, you know, you're fine. It's like you with your own kids, you know, you fully, you fully understand where they're coming from. And that's why you're so lenient, because you know, I, I, I dig it. You know? So I think that's... Yeah, you know, I, I heard a great concept from a, a couple of colleagues of ours where they talk about nice first care. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that, that probably captures what you're saying. You know, we're, we're all nice. Yep. It's good to be nice, brought up to be nice, but it's easy to be nice. Mm. You know, and if you care, it might be asking that harder question or digging that deep and it might feel a bit awkward and that sort of stuff. But I, like, I totally get where you're coming from. So I think... Um, well, they reckon really, it's a third question in, you know, it's like, hey, how are you going? Yeah, good, good. Second question, how did that thing you go, that, that, that meeting that you were doing that last week? Um, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I was, okay, not so bad. And then the third question in, yeah, how you feel all right? No, actually, no, no, I'm not terrible. You know, I'm really struggling with that. And the third question then gets it, you know, mm. so, yeah. Yeah, good stuff, good. Um, I guess then taking a step on, uh, you know, there wouldn't be too many people that have that know you or watched you or whatever wouldn't say you're a leader. And um, But I know you, you probably weren't always the most extroverted, you know, like, how do you think of leadership is within um, a team, mm. but but also for some of the business owners that might be watching, especially when that's not their natural position or they think it's not their natural position? Yeah, okay. Um, leadership, I find um, uh, a, a bit of a mystery. The latest on, on leadership is, is that you, you're supposed to be a mentor and you're judged by how many other mentors that mm. you create where before it was very much, uh, you know, I'm the boss and you guys, I'm telling you what to do and I just monitor. You, you, you really got to be, um, when you're a good leader, is that you give someone the task and you're not judging them, you just say, that's what you got to do, but you come to me all the time. When you're struggling, I'll help you. I'm not judging you. That seems to be the latest way. And I, I think that's, it's got a lot of positives. But if you don't think you're a natural leader, and what I mean by that is, is that some people, are really good at just, at normal times, you know, everything's going great, they're the organizers. Mm. Beats, you know, let's uh, mate, we'll, we'll go out for lunch, we've got this, they, they, they naturally get up and talk. Um, and being a connector, um, you know, a key figure is just natural to them. But I find <clears throat> that leadership comes out under different circumstances. So um, I, I think the, the, the giant within all of us is there, that leader that rises up, you know, but at different times. So, you know, when you go to war conditions, um, they always say that Winston Churchill was a wonderful leader under war conditions, but under normal conditions, not. So you'll find that within the business and within yourself, a bit of pressure might come in um, and where you don't normally talk and, and it really starts to get on the line, you'll find that you'll, you'll rise and, and, and you will just by, by nature, you go, mate, I'm not, you know, we're getting ripped here. I mean, this is unfair. And you, and you, and you, that in a, you come out and all of a sudden you're a great leader and you're doing it. It's there. It just needs the right circumstance to come out. So, yep, God bless those people, all the, all the organisers, because you, you, it's really life's really um, pretty raw without them. So let, let all that go. Let, all, let everyone do what they're naturally strong at. But just know that when the time is right, you'll stand up and you'll lead just the right circumstances as required. You also got to be the most diligent, you know, and 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 have the most powerful reason. Nothing can stop you from being the most dedicated and doing all the things that you want other people to to, to show you um, as say an employee. 
you know, you, you got to be there early, and you got to be pumped, and, yep. and, and, and you got to be that person everyone else wants to work with. You know, where you, you know, you've got a good sense of humour, and, and love people love being around. You're a bit magnetic, but you can build all those traits. Yeah, good. No, I, I like the fact that last comment you can build those traits. I think a lot of people think it's just, you know, something you're born with. But um... mate, leadership for me was like, re- man, I was really shy. You know, really, really shy. So. Um, I thought it after talking in front of someone was about as much fun as going to the dentist. I didn't. That wasn't my go. But you, you, you build into it, and as I said, you, you, through that process of if I'm doing it tough, you get all that stuff squeezed out of you, and uh, and at the end, you know, you're a different person. We're here to evolve. We're here to keep growing and evolving. And, and the tough times, unfortunately, are the times where you you, you know you, you improve the most. It's just the the data's there on that one, you know. So um, getting yourself out there and and doing the things that that become, that are difficult to you is a part of that process. And um, yeah, everyone's a leader. Mm. It just, it's a different circumstance that brings it out. What that circumstance is, you gotta find out. Mm, powerful message. Mate, one of the things, and I, I know um, you've spoken with us about this, and something I hadn't always considered, but uh, mindset, you know, um, uh, and you just referred to you know, if you're the, you're the owner, you're the leader, you, you, you're trying to achieve something in business, you've got to turn up right. Um, what's some of the stuff that, uh, you know, like meditation, which I know for most blokes, that's probably a bit too touchy-feely, yogi type thing, but, you know, I know it's got a powerful message and, and, and quite uh, powerful ramifications that come off it, you know. Talk to me a bit about mindset and getting yourself right and making sure you're in the best place to lead a team or a business. Well... Mate, first of all, uh, balance. Uh, you know, I used to find, my, I mean, if you sleep too much or you sleep too little, you have problems. You know, if you're working too long or you're not working long enough, you have problems. Um, if you get yourself too much into one part of the business and, and you know, you're concentrating there, another part goes. It's really having the ability to have that even curl and everything you do to provide yourself as an individual have the right mindset to even give yourself a chance to go to work and and do some good stuff mm. so first one I, I reckon that's um, that's pretty important um, some of the other scenarios is that we all know today that um, you know things like anxiety um, and even you know the depression and just being overwhelmed is really easy and, and and you know the data sort of put it down to you know we're always on this which we become very restless it's, it's a constant scenario of of uh, going from uh, technology to to here we, we don't walk as much and we don't you know do all the, the things that we used to do as I suppose as kids so you really got to get on top and understand that yeah the world is a little bit different and if i don't watch myself and keep that balance you know all of a sudden i'm feeling anxious about everything it was one thing that was making me anxious um that thing is now gone but still why am i still anxious you know and it's because you you, you nearly grooved it into your brain where you just that's how i act now mm. and, and you got to watch it so you can go from like one coffee to like i'm having six coffees a day you know and all that type of stuff so um look i remember when I was playing, when I was playing footy, right, I didn't eat meat, and it was like, it was yeah, like we surprised. It was the weirdest thing. I'd go to a barbecue, and I was like, I'm like 23 or 24, and for some reason, I just said, oh, I, just, I just don't want to eat meat. Well, mate, it's like, what do you mean you don't eat meat? Are you serious? So I used to hide it. Uh, every barbecue I'd go to, I'd go, oh, that's all right. I used to eat just an onion sandwich or whatever. <laughs> but um, things had changed a little bit. And also, I was meditating, and and I wouldn't tell a soul, not even my best mate, because um, you know back in the, uh, the you know the nineties, you know you're pretty weird if you meditated. But uh, you know, thank heavens that after all those years, um, I think it's 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 really changed. I think most people meditate, and a lot of you know yoga, like hatha yoga, stretching yoga, is is coming to play, and um, I need to do more of that because that's. The old body's getting a bit stiff, but I reckon, um, I reckon within ten years that the, in the school curriculum, meditation will be a part of it, because you've got to have the tools to be able to understand or slow the mind down and get yourself a re um, reload yourself mm. or reset yourself and go. All right, here we go again. And all meditation is 
is that instead of your conscious mind, you're like you, you might be up at three o'clock in the morning going, thinking about what I'm gonna to do today, and I've, oh, yesterday hasn't fixed up. And once you start, the mind just goes, 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 and then it's out of control. And, and you start realizing that I'm not the mind, you know, I know my mind's going crazy, so I'm not the mind, and I'm not the body, I'm not a foot or an elbow. Um, so understanding that, okay, I can control the mind, and how do I do it? Well, just techniques of, of yoga and, um, and meditation basically just put you back in, in the picture where you go, okay, I'm concentrating on technique, it's slowing my conscious mind down, so I've, I've got that under control. And then they say that it's the subconscious mind that's the real killer because the subconscious mind has recorded everything you've ever done and all your beliefs, the way you view the world, um, you know, your likes, your dislikes, your desires, your can't, everything is all stored there and it's continually suggesting to you um, all the time to your conscious mind, um, we like this, we don't do that, we don't like crowds. So you're kind of corralled into a certain way of viewing the world or the way that I like to do it is, you know, you're wearing a certain set of glasses that it's unique to you, that's how you view the world with you know, with all your feelings and things. So it's very hard to change. And 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 the data behind that is is that basically you have sixty to seventy thousand thoughts a day, and of those thoughts, or sixty to seventy thousand thoughts, ninety percent of them are the same as yesterday. So we're mm. very much the same, same sort of way. So, you know, your your mindset, um, getting control of those emotions. So if you're used to being an anxious sort of a person and a restless person, it doesn't change easy. So what meditation does um, and other you know exercise does, connecting with people, you know, when you train, catching up for a coffee and, and talking things out, it just helps you um, re, re, reset everything in your mind, slow yourself back down, and then you get into that right level where I can go again. And, and connecting is really good because People that have really serious problems with getting on top of their thoughts and they're a bit, bit down, is it basically like all of us, you come obsessed with your own thoughts and you're just thinking about yourself all the time, I think this way and I can't get over it, and your world becomes smaller. Well, basically all they do is, is say, uh, you know, when you start thinking about someone else or connecting with someone else, all of a sudden you forget about yourself. And particularly if you can help someone, Y your mind starts to get out of your own scenario of continually worrying about your own worries and you're actually worried, thinking about someone else and helping mm. them out and it really jolts you out of it. So I reckon all those things in this day and age are really important. You know? Yeah, I think it's, um, I, I gotta agree with you, the, 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 the school, um, you know, I was gonna say lever, but also just someone at that age generally, with, especially the social media and that sort of stuff. And you know, from a business owner's point of view, they're our future employees, they're at, well, I know for us, there are current employees as well, and um, it is, it, it's got to be, let's put importance on what's really important, not necessarily what's on Facebook, you know, like for right, so. I mean, I mean, you imagine growing up from the age of, I don't know, maybe kids of these days, mate, eight, nine, ten, they're just doing this all the time, watching TV, doing this all the time, and, um, you know, it's like trying to stop, stop an ocean, you know, mm -hmm. say, hey, you know, get off the technology, you know, it's really hard, so... Uh, you know, they're, they're coming through something that I can't relate with. We know, I never, never experienced that. No, and, and, and it really, um, I read a stat that said um, millennials, and not judging, but, but you know, they have never turned their phone off. You know, they didn't know how, some of them didn't know how to turn their phone off mm. and have never had their phone more than a metre away from them. You know, like that's scary. I think, what does that do for productivity? So from a, from a business owner's point of view, um, and we're going through this as a business right now. We're absolutely planning around introducing things like meditation and massage and these sort of things within mm. to a, a working environment. That mate, don't worry about work. What about at home? You just try to tell a young one, mate, get off the phone. It's pretty hard, yakka. Yeah. Um, but again, it's hard to relate. You know, I, I, I didn't go through it. Yeah. You know, no, so. I get that. All right. Um, mate, we could talk about this all day. You know, like I, I really enjoy these chats, but. I know in the interest of time, we might uh, start to wrap a few things up, but what's one of the, the, the maybe the hardest, but best lessons you had on the field and, and or in the, in the team environment, the sport environment, versus uh, also the same scenario in after football? Okay, that's interesting. Um, I, look, I think out of, I think out of foot, out of, out of rugby league, um, I learned how to 
chase down a goal and have um, an underlying belief that um, though the dualistic nature of you start to do a new goal, you, you want to do something new, uh, create something, the, the inevitable obstacles that come in the, in the way um, is that, you know, normally you think, oh, you know, they'll, they'll knock you over or whatever. But I just know now, or going through that scenario, is that the, the, it, if you don't give up and, and the goal is it has real value for you and for others around you, and it, it, nothing can stop you. You become like a, a, an immovable um, rock that uh, just can't be changed. There's, no, there's, there's more chance of the sun and the earth swapping, swapping positions than, than you not achieving that goal. And I love seeing it in people when they've got something and they're really passionate about it, they become magnetic. You know, you're like, wow, yeah, good on you, mate. And in fact, I bumped into a guy um, who I used to know uh, a long time ago. His name's Craig Clark and he wanted to swim the English Channel. And because of COVID, he couldn't go. But for three years, he churned this goal. And I could just see it in him because when you really churn something, um, circumstances, place, things, people all start to come in line with your really powerful thoughts because you, you've engineered it in your brain, mm. you know, and, and it goes to the, you know, it goes to another level. And it comes back and it, and it comes back laden with energy, so I could feel it in him. And so when the when the English Channel got taken away, he just went boom and replaced it, um, and done a swim from. Cathnil Bay to Nobby, 36 k's, the same length. Yeah, just recently. Yeah, yeah, same length as the, the English Channel. And his dick stick is like, it's freezing cold, it's like 14, 15. And, and not only that, I mean, there's more sharks out there than you can make a stick at. They're everywhere. I remember being at Kays Beach last week, because so I do a little bit of ocean swimming, only about 750 metres, not 36 <laughs> k's. And the guys are going, mate, don't go out there. There's been a couple of white pointers hassling the surfers out all week. So I'm going, mate, you're a lunatic. You know, you, you, you're going out way out to sea. A lot of the times he was practicing on his own. But I just saw it in him that because he churned that goal so much, he his mind was thinking nothing but that. He turned it, he turned a bad situation into a good one, which is a great trait, created this, and all that momentum and energy, everyone else got behind him. You become you become a different person and 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 the mind's so powerful, you just draw <laughs> the right circumstances, you draw the right people in that can help you get there, and you know, the world looks different. So I learned that out of 40 years that when you're really passionate, the reason's good enough, and you work on it, you know, you churn the ether enough, and then you, you really work hard. Nothing can stop you. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I saw him uh, do it, and I went and watched him at the end, and but he pushed himself to, to great limits. He was crooked the next day and all the rest of it. But, but mate, nothing was going to stop him. They're the things that if you want to go, you talk about, you know, high performance, um, you know, elitism in, in, in mental scenarios or achieving goals in businesses. You got to get to that, you got to get to that level if you really want to do well, if you really want to make a difference, if you want to be the best at what you do, you got to get to that level. Mm. And, and there's great ways, uh, there's an art to it but nothing can stop you. And if you never give up, mate, you, you, I'm telling you, um, nothing, you it's 100% on. Yeah, I didn't, and, and uh, you just reminded me, last couple of nights I've watched that new documentary, um, Phoenix Rising, if you haven't watched it, get on and have a look on Netflix. Gig. And all about people that have had adversity in life, you know, Paralympics and some of the stories were just mind blowing, but same thing, knew what they wanted to do. And mm. yeah, pretty powerful. Okay. Um, Mate, as I said, we could talk all day. I think, you know, one of the things I'll give you um, something that you probably won't recognise yourself and, and I think business owners can learn from this. Well, well anyone can learn from this, but, but particularly our audience is mainly the business uh, business owners. The amount of time you give to people. I mean, I've been sitting with and everyone comes up, you know, uh, and I think you treat everyone with, with respect and, and give them time. And that's not a common trait from a lot of people. I think some people think about, well, what's in it for me or what can I get out of it? And that's... Um, uh, might be a goal as we're talking there, but it's a pretty big attribute that people can learn from. So, mate, that's just probably nothing. There's a comment just oh, no, thanks, to recognize. Sure. So, Appreciate it, mate. We couldn't let you go without saying something about where the night's at and uh, for the name yeah. of cash tunes, what are you thinking? Uh, no, I'm thinking good things. Um, I, I, I really like our coach, Adam O'Brien, um, a lot. I, I could play under him. Yeah, he's good. He's very good. And all... See, I was really big on when I was involved with the administration with the Knights is that, you know, here's a tolerance, here's who we are. That's the Newcastle way. 
built from the day that we started and, and all our attributes and, and representing the town. We're, we're tough people. Um, we don't like we don't like when our team plays and gets out physical because that's how they go. We're a physical place, mm. and and we don't like it when someone comes into our town and wants it more than us because they're two things that we can control. Sure, they might have we might have a team that's not as talented. You know, they might be spending twice as much in their salary cap. You know, and attracting better players and all that. But if we do those two things, we can live with that. Um, he he's taken on. He understands it, that's it, it's who we are. So if you resonate with our ways, you come in. We're not gonna let anyone in who wants to come in and wreck that. You know, like Manchester United as a club, do you think they know who they are and, 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 and they're well identified of the type of characteristics they, you know, you don't come in there and change them. As a coach doesn't come in and just go, this is, you guys get out of the road, Davey, this is what we do. No, 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 you're handpicked because you fit into us. And when you, when you become like that as a club, Again, you become kind of magnetic because mm. people from all over Australia resonate with what you're doing and they, they dig it. So that's how Manchester United uh, and this is really like that's our style of play, yeah. and that sets the tone for the, anything in the club. It's who we are, and and as a supporter, that's why Liverpool and all worldwide support because people resonate with that. I love I love that, and and that's where the Knights ultimately um, are starting to get to need to be. Because we're unique, you know, we, we, in the old days, when people would come from Sydney, mate, we, wanted, we just wanted to ambush them. We wanted to show them, mate, you ain't coming here and pushing us around. And we didn't win a lot at the start, but they didn't win the next week because they were sore. Mm -hmm. You know, we bashed them in, we hosed the dressing rooms, we made sure it's uncomfortable, made sure they didn't have hot water, and uh, get, get that one into you. And, and, and that's how we grew. So that's our, that's our base. We're physical, um, we, we, you know, we want to intimidate, we'll try and ambush you. Um, but we get to a point where you have all those as a base, but then you need the skill. So we were lucky we've got the Johns boys coming in, the Gidley boys coming in, and uh, our Davises and all that become good. Well, I see again now where Adam is, is stripping things back, but without, with our way. And I really respect that mm. because other coaches have come in and not done that. And it's it's like ripping your heart out, you know? And I won't go into um, name names, mm. but for me, one of the lowest points is when Danny Badiris, who I think is one of the greatest humans I've ever met and one of the greatest players, um, to strap a boot on for here. When he got let go, because the coach that was there at the, at the time just had no idea what was going on. And uh, yeah, that's, that's what can happen. So you need to have a really strong board ownership who understands this is who we are, this is our tolerance. People who fit into that, well, you're welcome and away you go. So I see um, the Knights starting to get that scenario back and I like it. Yeah, it's good, mate. I'm sure a lot of people will uh, will be uh, happy to hear that. But, um, mate, a lot to take away, uh, you know, and I don't care whether you're running a team in a sporting field, a team in business, but for, for this audience, I think there's heaps there, you know, try to summarise but having goals and learning how to chase them down, um, having resilience around that process. You know, it requires hard work. I think, you know, nothing's going to happen as much as people might believe in fallacies, nothing's gonna happen without hard work. There's po positive affirmations to keep you going. Um, you know, teamwork and really what does that mean? It's doing more for others and noticing what's done there. I think that's a key one. Do you, do you really put in for them? And, and the key one with that, I think you said, was really understanding each other. You know, if you don't understand each other, you don't really know what's the problem or mm. what's the issue. Um, everyone's a leader, and in leadership, you need to really have a powerful reason. And if you're the, if you are the, the one, the owner, or leading the team, or whatever it may be, if you set that way, your reason is more powerful than anyone's, and you need to set the tone and turn up properly. Um, and I think one of the key things, and I can learn from this as well, is balance. You know, balance mm. and and taking away some of the distractions, and just making sure we we look at uh, how we're. Uh, positioning our lives because too much of anything's not great. So um, I'm sure there's more in there, mate, but that's a no, that's good. Re yeah. really good, uh, some really good information there. And mate, thoroughly enjoy our chats and uh, thanks for thanks for coming on and talking cheers, to Cheers, mate. Thanks very much. And, cheers. Um, cheers for another episode, guys. Until next time.